It's between LDL and HDL cholesterol. Right, so you have two types of cholesterol. You have the LDL, which is known as the low density lipoprotein, which is considered the bad cholesterol. And you have the HDL, which is the high density lipoprotein, which is known as the good cholesterol. All right, read. You can stop eating cholesterol for the rest of your life and still have high levels. How can this be? For starters, all of your cells can create cholesterol. This uh -huh. is good because every cell in your body needs it to form protective membranes. Exactly. So cholesterol naturally is good, right? So your body naturally uh, creates cholesterol, but the good type of cholesterol, all right? And what the cholesterol does, it forms those protective, that protective barrier around your tissues and your cells to prevent disease from getting at your cells and your tissues, all right, which could form different cancers and different types of ailments, different sicknesses and um, different bacteria from getting in, all right? So that cholesterol is that protective barrier to help your immune system fight off various diseases, all right? Read. Your body actually monitors your cells and if it senses that a cell doesn't have enough cholesterol, it will produce more. Exactly, so it's like, uh, like, like on some RoboCop type junk, you know what I mean? A uh, RoboCop with a scanner. You know I mean, he scan out the bad guy who he looking for. Then he seek in and get him. That's how the cholesterol does. When it seeks that certain parts of the body, it's missing that cholesterol. It sends out that radar. I right, time to produce more, and it's right there. All right, read. And cholesterol also is an essential building block for naturally produced vitamin D and of the good stuff like estrogen and testosterone. Uh huh. But even though every cell can make its own cholesterol, some cells need extra help with their supply. This is where your liver comes in. Exactly, and your liver is one of the main key things that help you create cholesterol, all right, when your body is lacking it and can't produce enough, all right, we'll read. Your body, mainly your liver, produces 75% of your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Your small intestines also aids in both the creation and, and Absorption of cholesterol. Mm -hmm. The average diet adds another 300 to 500 milligrams of cholesterol. This external cholesterol comes from animal and dairy products. Exactly. So your body naturally creates the cholesterol that you need. But what you get the external source of cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, from what? Meats and dairy products. Those are the only two full sources where you can get bad cholesterol from. All right, so what are you intaking meats for? Just to kill you, basically. I mean, to create bad cholesterol and to clog up your arteries and your blood vessels, all right? But your body naturally creates the good cholesterol that you need, all right, to sustain your life, all right? But read. But even if you eat foods without cholesterol, mm -hmm. the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins all break down eventually and release carbon which your liver turns into cholesterol. Exactly, so what is the point of meat if your body can do it on its own without meat? You know what I mean? Your carbohydrates, your fats, and different protein. What uh, purpose does meat really serve? None at all. All, right? all it does is lead to death ultimately. You know what I'm saying? Not, not to say that you can't eat meat, period. You know what I mean? It would be best to go vegan if possible. I mean, but at least limit your meats to a certain portion, all right? But uh, was it more on that, or that was it? No, that was it, though. That was it? Yeah. All right, give me the, um, <clears throat> finish that up. Uh, Ciroc uh, 37 and uh, 31. Okay. By, all right, verse 31. By mm -hmm. Sir Phaeton have many perished, but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. Exactly, but he that taketh heed prolong of his life. So what? You take heed to the things that you put in your body, all right? Because your body is the temple of the most high, man. So you don't defile your body only by smoking cigarettes or doing weed or fornicating with women. What? It's by excessive meats as well, all right? You're naturally destroying your body. It's bad enough we already got Esau out here, you know what I'm saying, contaminating the food, GMOs, and things like that. So why are we abusing ourselves through these meats, man? All right, and the Lord said, "Be not insatiable in any dainty thing, so don't be too greedy and hung up on eating meat." You know what I'm saying? Like at every single meal, you gotta have a meat. You gotta have a meat for what reason? You know what I'm saying? Bring it back from the top. All right, yeah, bring it back. Sirach so chapter 37 and verse 29: Be not insatiable in any dainty thing, mm -hmm. nor too greedy upon meats, 
For excess of meats bring of sickness, and surfeiting would turn into cola. Mm -hmm. By surfeiting have many perish, but he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. Exactly. So you have to take heed to the things that you put into your body, man. Every single thing that you put into your body is detrimental to your health. And these meats leads to nothing but sickness and death, man. All right. Um, so now that we've been over some things, you know what I'm saying, that uh, prohibits, I mean, your body from getting oxygen and ultimately leads to death, what's some of the things that can lead to life in your body? I mean, help you prolong your life. The plant life, all right? Because you got to realize, too, when you eating these Esau foods and all of this bull crap out here, you know what I mean, what? You're starting to feel sluggish, you know what I mean? And you get the itis. You get tired and want to go to sleep. You might, you know what I mean, just came from uh, off the gig or something like, yeah, I got to get my studies up for this week, you know what I'm saying? Camp coming up. You might be getting ready, preparing your lesson or whatever you're going to do for a sit down and study. But what? You go home, you know what I mean? Oh, I got to go get something to eat. Why not go get something to eat? Oh, now you got the itis. You're putting the studies off. Now you're falling asleep. You know what I mean? You knocked your whole study plan off, man. You know what I'm saying? But what? When you're eating the right foods, you're eating that plant life, what? You get energy, all right? Because food is naturally supposed to energize your body, not leave you all sluggish and down and out. All right? Give me um, in the, um strap, uh, 1 Samuel 14, 26 and 27. Alright, to prove to you, you know what I'm saying, that food is supposed to energize you and not leave you all sluggish and down and out. Alright? Con. 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 26. Uh -huh. And when the people were come into the wood, behold, the honey dropped, but no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. Uh -huh. But Jonathan heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand and dipped it in a honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth and his eyes were enlightened. Exactly. So when Jonathan put his mouth to the honeycomb, his eyes were enlightened. What? It gave him that jolt of energy. Like if uh, brothers ever watched the cartoon Dragon Ball Z, they eat a sensu bean or, or mm. fruit or something, but they get that jolt of energy. They totally revitalized. They might have used up all their powers. You know what I'm saying, but now what with that sense of being, they good to go. They back to 100, percent and that's what I mean. The plant life, these fruits and these herbs do to your body. They breathe life into your body. All right, because naturally, uh, plant life is very similar to the human body. I mean, so uh, for our human body, we have hemoglobin, and the main atom in hemoglobin is iron, which strengthens the blood, and the main atom. That's in, uh, and the main thing that's in the plant life is chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. And the main atom that's in chlorophyll is magnesium, the strength of the plant blood, all right? And the plant, plant life blood and our blood are very identical except for those two atoms. I mean, and when you are uh, ingesting the plant life, it naturally converts carbon dioxide into oxygen for us. So what? Which breathes more life into our body, all right? Because Esau knows this too. All right, through oxygenation therapy and thoroughly oxygenating the blood through plant life and various forms of treatment, you can kill all forms of diseases, period, known to man. No disease can survive in the oxygenated zone, in the oxygenated cell, or, or if your blood is totally oxygenated. No disease known to man can survive, whether it's AIDS, herpes, different cancers, none of that. All right, and Esau knows this. I'm going to get this document on my phone real quick. I didn't have time to uh, print it out, but um, yeah, here it is, yeah, read from the top right there. <clears throat> the headline reads, the FDA continues to suppress ozone therapy despite proven efficiency. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In January 2010, the FDA sent U.S. Marshals into Auburn, California to raid Manufacturer apply ozone systems and seize their ozone generators. Mm -hmm. The FDA press release asserted all kinds of ridiculous reasons for this particular raid, citing poor manufacturing procedures and the generators' potential for the spreading infections, among others. Exactly. So these crackers, they had to find an excuse just to raid their shop because they know what they was doing. They were giving people oxygenated therapy. I mean, oxygenated therapy is uh, ozonated olive oil, all right? 
is certain molecules mixed with the olive oil, you know what I mean, to oxygenate your blood. You could put it, you could use a mask, put it to your face, and you could breathe it 